I'm not ashamed. What was the sabbatical year in Israel for? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on Walking Through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you and turn to Exodus 23, we're going to be reading from verses 10 to 13. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus 23, beginning at verse 10. Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce. But in the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field may eat. In like manner you shall do with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. And in all that I have said to you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of other gods, nor let it be heard from your mouth. In chapters 21 to 23, we have the judgments of God that would become part of the book of the covenant, and thus part of the law of Moses. Colossians 2.14 says that we are not under this law today, but under the law of Christ. But it is still important to study this, so that we can see how God dealt with his people of old, and how he expects us to be obedient to his law that he has given us today. As we have seen, there were laws concerning slavery, violence, justice, and a whole host of what we might call minor things, but God views them as serious enough to include them in his law with Israel. We now come to more of the Sabbath laws. In chapter 20, in verses 8 to 11, we saw God's law concerning the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was the seventh day of the week, what we would call Saturday. On that day, they were to take a day of rest. Not only the rich were to observe the day, not only the poor were to observe the day, not only men, not only women, not only Israelites, but strangers in the land, and not only humans. This was a total day of rest. They had six days to do work, but on the seventh day the Lord had them set apart a day for them to rest, a reward for all their hard work. Today in our society we have taken away any days of rest, with companies cutting back on holidays, many having their employees work every day of the week. The results of that attitude have shown, for not only are people stressed out and exhausted from overwork, but they are less religious, not having any time to set apart for God. Even though we're not commanded to take a day off to honor God, it is still a good idea. In chapter 23, verse 10, though, we have another kind of Sabbath. This is the Sabbath year, sometimes referred to as the sabbatical year. No, this is not a year in which Israel would sit around lazily and do no work. But it was a year they would allow the land to rest, not only their fields, but their vineyards and their olive groves too. God gave the reason for this seventh year of rest for the fields, so that the poor may eat of the fields, and then what is left over the beasts may eat. When you do not plant something in the field, the field will naturally grow of itself. What that something is depends on what the type of field it is. It certainly wouldn't be in enough abundance to sell, but it would be enough to sustain the poor as well as the wild animals. People who owned land were not to plant and harvest that year, but allow the fields to remain dormant. By extension, that also meant that they would need to store up extra food during the years before this seventh year, so that they would have food to eat during the sabbatical year. So, in creating this law, God was caring for the poor, and he would, as he would do in other ways as well, but at the same time protecting Israel against selfishness and greed. It is a law that Israel, on the whole, would not heed and is made mention of 800 years later when Judah would be taken off into captivity by the Babylonians. From a purely agricultural standpoint, though, God having the land rest from time to time is good farming as well, as the soil will thus produce stronger crops if it isn't forced to produce for years without end. Thus, even though God had specific reasons for having Israel observe this sabbatical year, the God of this universe also knew what he was doing in relation to what the soil of this earth needed. Verse 12 then reiterates God's law concerning the weekly Sabbath. In chapter 20, the Sabbath is described as being of the Lord, but here God gives another reason for it, a reason that we've already alluded to already, which is that it is a, ray, a day to rejuvenate. God knows our bodies better than we do. If we work constantly without ever taking time to rest, and by this, I don't mean each evening, we will eventually get sick, and if we're not careful enough, we will die. That is why this podcast from time to time takes time off, so that I can get time to rest from writing and recording. Now, yes, I will be doing other things, but writing and recording seven episodes a week takes a lot of time, and so it is good to take a rest every now and then. 
Verse 13 closes this section by talking about false gods. They were to be careful that they weren't to walk after the other gods nor speak of them, so as not to give others the impression that these gods were real. Jehovah wanted Israel to serve him and him alone, so a constant reminder of this and his judgments were necessary. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus 23, verses 14 to 19, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.